Section 3.6, absolute value functions. In reality, absolute value functions are often used to represent things that live in a range, values that stay within a certain, in certain parameters. So in this example, we talk about electrical parts. So electrical parts, such as resistors and capacitors, come with specified values of their operating parameters, resistance, capacitance, etc. However, due to imprecision in manufacturing, the actual values of these parameters vary somewhat from piece to piece even when they're supposed to be exactly the same. The best that manufacturers can do is to try to guarantee the variations will stay within a specified range. 1%, 5%, 10%, something in that regard. So suppose we have a resistor rated at 680 ohms, plus or minus 5%. Use the absolute value function to express the range of possible values of the actual resistance. So first we're going to use R to be our resistance. So if we want values to be close to or within a certain distance of 680, the absolute value of R minus 680, that is the distance between the actual resistance and 680 ohms. Now we want that to be within the specific range, and I want to emphasize that word. When we talk about within, this is where this comes in less than or equal to. The distance between the actual and the theoretical, the 680, is going to be less than or equal to whatever our range is. Okay, in this case, 5%. So 5% of 680 is 34. So we want our resistance to be within 34 ohms of 680 ohms. And that is how we would write that. Now, I will, would like to draw this on a number line just to make a point. If I have my resistance and I have 680, in fact, let's just use, let's just put 680 there. Our resistance is going to be within 34 units, meaning plus or minus 34 write that differently. All right, so somewhere in this range is where our resistance is going to lie. So that is a visual representation of what of what that inequality actually states. All the values within 34 ohms of our targeted 680 ohms. Example two is write an equation for the function graphed. Okay, so this is a slight turn. Now, we know that an absolute value function, based on our toolkit functions and our transformations from the last section, are going to be of this form. A, absolute value of x minus h plus k where h and k are how it is shifted left, right, up, and down, and a is a vertical stretch or shrink. Now because the center of this graph, okay, our vertex, is at the point 3, negative 2, I can certainly say that my k value, I'm going to go with one piece at a time, in fact we'll go ahead and leave that blank for the moment, is minus 2 because it is shifted down 2 and because it is shifted to the right 3 to the right 3 we have x minus 3 so the value of x minus 3 again that indicates it is shifted to the right 3 and down 2 now to find the value the stretch value here we want a point that is on our graph. Any point will do. I'm going to go ahead and use the point 4, 0. That tells me when the input is 4, the output is 0. So I'm going to write this equation here. 0 equals a absolute value of x, but my input is 4, so let's use that. 4 minus 3 minus 2. The absolute value of 4 minus 3 is 1, so this gives me the equation a minus 2 equals 0. 
meaning that a equals 2. Pairing that with that equation that we had in that form, our function is f of x equals 2 absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2. And there we have the equation for that graph. I meant to point out, example 1, actually, if you want more examples of that, you should refer back to section 2.7. And example 3 is very similar to what we talked about or we discussed in, in section 2.6. So let's look at this. This is actually our last example of the section. It's a very brief section. For more problems or practice problems, you can check out the textbook at the link at the very bottom there. So for the function f of x equals the absolute value of 4x plus 1, minus 7, find the values of x such that f of x equals 0. So to find those values of x, what we need to do is we want our output to be 0. So if our output is 0, absolute value 4x plus 1, minus 7. We need to isolate our absolute value, and so adding 7 to both sides, we get, and I'm going to rearrange this equation, the absolute value of 4x plus 1 is equal to 7. Now based on section 2.6, this produces two equations because the absolute value it can be positive, well the value is positive, but what is inside the absolute value, the quantity expressed here could be positive or negative 7 because the absolute value of positive 7 is 7 and the absolute value of negative 7 is also 7. So we have two cases here. Either 4x plus 1 equals 7 or 4x plus 1 equals negative 7. In the first case, subtracting 1 gets us 4x equals 6 which means that x equals 3 halves. In the second case, subtracting 1, 4x equals negative 8, x equals negative 2. So our two solutions are x equals 3 over 2 and x equals negative 2. Those are the x values that will make the output 0. All right, that is the end of this section. Remember, for more examples, you can check out the textbook. You can also check out 2.6 and 2.7 in the textbook, OpenStax College Algebra. And remember how we work with absolute values.